Good evening everybody, today we're going to take a look at some ultra rare Buckethead collector's items. Most Buckethead fans will know that just about everything that Buckethead releases eventually becomes rare, hard to find, out of print or so mythical that it might not even exist. So let's begin. Hey, do you have any of those ultra gross Buckethead Zillatron dual doll packs left? When Buckethead released his second studio album, Giant Robot, in 1994 through Sony Records in Japan, an eight-page Buckethead comic was featured in the album's booklet. The comic was only made available in Japan because, according to Buckethead's website, Buckethead didn't like it. So, don't be too disheartened if you don't own it. The album is now long out of print with only a handful of the Japanese comic book version available as imports. The website further added that the 1999 comic book The World of Buckethead by Dave McKean is a far better representation of Buckethead's vision of Buckethead Land, and I would definitely agree. Dave McKean's World of Buckethead is long out of print, rare, and will now cost over five times its original price when available at auction. What is that? This, then, a giant robot. Shortly before joining Guns N' Roses in 2000, Buckethead began offering personalized recordings to his fans. The CD recordings, priced at $50 each, were 30 minutes long and featured extended jamming, shredding, and even the occasional message from Buckethead himself, making them a rare collector's item. <laughs> Although Buckethead's 2010 custom guitar by Gibson is now somewhat rare, they are still in circulation online via auction for around three to seven thousand dollars. But what about a one-off custom-made guitar owned and used by Buckethead himself? Here we go to Buckethead Land. Buckethead Land. In 1991, Buckethead collaborated with musician Henry Kaiser on the album Hope You Like Our New Direction. Henry Kaiser was so taken by Buckethead's guitar superpowers that he gave Buckethead a special gift, a custom Steinberger GS guitar, now commonly known as Kaiser's Gift. A decade or so later in 2002, a contest was held where the winner would receive the Kaiser's Gift Guitar, which Buckethead primarily used during the making of Praxis's Transmutation album. A winner was apparently chosen in August 2002 and received the guitar. However, the winner's name was never announced and the contest was never mentioned again. So, whether the contest was all a stunt or someone actually won the guitar, we don't know. Unless the former admin of the site wants to tell us, or if you were the lucky one who now owns Kaiser's Gift. And as a side note, Buckethead signed and donated some of his guitars to the Hard Rock Cafe in the mid-2000s. Notably his Jackson Coopwood guitar and classic purple Air Jordan ESP guitar. And if Hard Rock ever decided to put the guitars up for auction, then you can expect to pay upwards of $7,000. From 2016 to 2018, Buckethead's website began releasing hundreds of pieces of artwork, from slunk cards, photos, canvas cards and more. But the most sought after of these items were Buckethead's oil and acrylic paintings. Releasing over 300 paintings, each one costed around two to $500, the one-off pieces are now ultra rare. The rarest of these unnamed paintings include those that have writing such as the Blue 13, Chewed Up, and 2 plus 2 equals 5, and those that show Buckethead's darker, gorier side. And top in the list of the rarest are the paintings that were used as Pike cover albums. And speaking 
Speaking of rare paintings, congratulations if you managed to purchase the now ultra rare series of paintings and limited edition prints that were sold through producer Travis Dickerson's website in the mid 2000s. Those things sold faster than you can say she sells, she sells by the slaughterhouse. And a double congratulations with a cherry on top if you managed to buy one of the now super rare hand painted buckethead buckets that went on sale in 2013. Personally, I'd love to see these make a comeback. Did you manage to buy one? Let us know. <laughs> In late 1999, during Buckethead's tour with Primus, Buckethead's website held an online auction selling one-off collector's pieces. As these items are some of the very first Buckethead merchandise available for purchase, they are now ultra rare. These items included a black and grey canvas wallet, a Buckethead Land silver spoon, four plastic mini figurines that showed Buckethead dressed as a butcher as well as a fireman wielding an axe and chainsaw, and a framed Buckethead Land haunted farm poster. Also put up for auction but never sold were a 16mm original film titled Buckethead Land Chamber of Horrors, also for sale was life-size animatronics of Buckethead and a pig's head, priced between five and nine thousand dollars. While it's more than likely these two animatronics weren't actually real, if someone did bid on the items then more than likely Buckethead would have turned up at their house and given them a one-on-one -on -one performance. With a pig. Whilst cassette tapes are highly unlikely to ever come back into popularity, early Buckethead cassettes are still sought after by hardcore Buckethead collectors. Initially available in the late 90s through mail order, these rare cassettes include Giant Robot Live, Buckethead Land demo tapes, a Monsters and Robots sampler tape, and the most sought after of the bunch, the three volume grab bag cassettes. For those of you that purchased some of Buckethead's vinyl albums in 2018, you also got a two minute personalized cassette tape included with the purchase. So maybe cassette tapes are making a comeback after all. And last but not least, Buckethead CDs. Chicken, no, they don't here. serve chicken at Buckethead Land. Uh -uh. To name every CD of Buckethead's that is now rare and out of print would extend this video's length to about 3 hours. Instead, I'm gonna highlight some of the more sought after, ultra rare items that the hardcore bucket box searched the world over for. Often considered as the holy grail of Buckethead CDs, Buckethead's Giant Robot album was released on small Japanese record label NTT Records in 1996 in limited quantities. The 1996 classic album is long out of print and when it does come up for auction it normally fetches in the region of $400. But be careful as the album is often faked and duplicated. Also, make sure not to confuse the album with the 1994 Buckethead album of the same name. Released in March 2004 as a tour-only CD, Buckethead's super heavy album The Island of Lost Minds was later re-released with a different album cover, thus making the tour-only album cover version a collector's item, and one that's hardly ever seen at auction. So if you managed to snag the original CD during the 2004 tour, good job. In December 2007, Buckethead, using his alter ego Death Cube K, released a 5 CD set called Monolith. Not only is this set long out of print and rare, but it's also fairly unique. 
each CD was around 45 minutes long and if you take the 5 tracks off the CD and merge them into one, then you're left with a 45 minute song that will probably give you nightmares. In 2007, Buckethead released his monumental set of 13 albums entitled In Search of The. Each CD was hand-drawn and numbered by Buckethead and limited to 800 to 1000 copies, priced at $200 for the set. To purchase a signed and numbered edition at auction now will cost you around $400 to $700. And finally, a CD so rare that only Buckethead has it. Probably. Buckethead Plays Disney was an album that was scheduled for release in the late 90s but never came out. Reportedly due to Buckethead never feeling quite satisfied with the album. The album and cover can be seen briefly in the Binge Clips VHS tapes, so clearly it was made. Whether Buckethead couldn't get the copyright clearance to release the album is unknown. So, unless you break into Buckethead's home and steal it, it will remain the rarest of the rare. Wanna dig up bodies, wanna dig up bodies. So, I'd love to know if you guys own any of these ultra rare items, or do you have any rare Buckethead items that we didn't mention? There's some super hardcore collectors out there, so let us know what you got, and thanks for watching.